Hey y'all, what's up? I just finished 45 minutes of cardio and that inspired me to do a little video for you on treadmills. So, treadmills don't have to be super expensive. I picked this one up at a thrift store for $25. All I had to do was reposition the case on the motor because it was making a grinding sound. 25 bucks. It folds up, fits into my bedroom. I use this at least three or four days a week. Now, a lot of people hate running. That's fine. You don't have to run on a treadmill. There are different ways to get your heart rate, your heartbeat going. One of those ways is an incline. So, when we're walking at an incline, we're using different muscle groups. We're having to step up that hill. What we need to see, not this. We don't want a broken back. Nice tight core, squeeze the glutes, lean into it. Really working hard. Now we've all seen that person at the gym. They grab onto the rails and they lean back as they're walking. Well, that's not putting any extra effort into it. That's just looking different and slightly weird. So, I have some visual representations of what I'm talking about, and these will come back around. So you see, my little dude is on his X and Y axis on his plane. That's when we're walking nice and flat. This is leaning forward, really doing the extra work. You see how those planes change? And he's moving into it. This is not really knowing what you're doing and looking kind of silly. All right? You don't have to ride dirty in your treadmill. So, other things. Make sure your hips are facing forward. Make sure your shoulders are staying forward as much as possible. You don't want to Tina Belter it. You don't want to do the don't snatch my purse run. I call this the don't snatch my purse. No! Now, we also have all seen that dude on the treadmill with ILS, invisible lat syndrome, running like a pterodactyl that's trying to play airplane. That's not doing any good either. We need to keep all of our momentum going forward. Arms at about 90 degrees, because that's taking everything forward. You're working smarter, not harder. That is called economy of movement. So when we do that twisty motion, that's poor economy of movement because we're taking our momentum side to side and we're not actually working, all right? So we need to make sure we're picking up the feet, rolling through the whole foot, pushing off of the toe so we're utilizing all of the muscles. When you're running, those knees should come to about 45 degrees in the front, picking it up, all right? We all know somebody who runs with their feet right underneath them. That's not right. If you're sprinting, you're gonna pick up your feet even farther. So again, no, don't snatch my purse run. No pterodactyl run. Definitely no kitten paws. All right, keep everything nice and tight. Economy and movement. Work smarter, not harder. All right, those visuals are gonna circle right back around. Last thing, make sure that you have the proper shoes for how you run, how your foot is shaped. Don't go pick up a pair of shoes off of the shelf. Ooh, I just finished my cardio, haha. So don't go pick up a, a pair of shoes off of a box store shelf. Those shoes are the equivalent of one size fits all. And if you've ever had a one size fits all shirt, you know that one size fits no one, all right? So, form, different ways of increasing intensity to get your heart rate up there. Now, good judgment on if your heart rate is right or not is if you can talk to somebody like I'm talking right now, all right? I could carry on a conversation, but I gotta catch my breath every now and again. You don't wanna be completely out of breath, but you don't wanna carry on a conversation like you're talking to your best buddy, all right? So, form, correct intensity, correct shoe. That's going to alleviate a lot of woes of cardio. Make sure you're getting in 90 to 150 minutes of cardio a week. If you're doing some mixed intensity, so some high intensity and some moderate intensity. American College Sports Medicine says if you're doing all moderate intensity, then you need to get in 150 to 300 minutes a week. 
Make sure you've got some good carbohydrates to fuel your cardio. That's right. I say carbohydrates. They're not your enemy. Exercising wrong and being sedentary are your enemies. All right? So other things to consider when you're getting in your cardio. Make sure you have enough electrolytes. Electrolytes are salts. Those help our muscles contract, and that's a good thing. So we need to make sure we have enough salt in our system. We also need to make sure that we're hydrated enough. So make sure you're getting enough water. We also need to vary our cardio. If you vary it, then it doesn't get as boring as just running all the time. So good forms of cardio are running, cycling, um, swimming is a great form of cardio. Tennis is not a great form of cardio. It's a great exercise, but it's explosive movements. And therefore, it's not long enough or consistent enough usually to be considered cardiovascular exercise. It could be considered some high intensity exercises. And I definitely recommend playing tennis. I love playing tennis. Um, we also can keep it interesting by doing cardio in groups. So right now, um, it's a little hard to do things in groups. So make sure you're doing it safely. But maybe if you have family members or your COVID bubble, then um, it's perfectly fine to keep everybody motivated as well. To steal a term from South Park, I call that accountability buddies. All right. If you know which episode I'm talking about, kudos to you. We could be friends. Um, music. Music helps with your cardio. Music is a proven ergogenic aid. It can help to... Um, push you along a little bit harder in your cardiovascular exercises. Another ergogenic aid that can help you in your cardio is called beta alanine. It's a buffer. And so what that does is when your lactic acid builds up, it helps that to not burn as much. Therefore, you can push a little bit harder. Um, make sure you're fueling your cardio as well. Like I mentioned earlier, you need to make sure you have enough carbohydrates and fats are good for cardio also. So we have different energy systems. They're all working simultaneously, but one is going to take over depending on what we're doing. More high intensity cardio is going to be fueled by carbohydrates. Um, moderate intensity, we're going to use carbohydrates, but then we're going to eventually ease in to using our free fatty acids and what's called aerobic lipolysis. You can hear my chicken outside laying an egg. Laying an egg is not cardio. All right, so other things. Make sure that you are warming up before your cardio and stretching after your cardio. We don't want a static stretch before we perform. That's been shown to increase your risk of injury. Dynamic stretching is a good idea and warming up. So like foam rolling, some high knees, some butt kicks, things like that. Those are great before your cardio, but don't statically stretch and never ever ballistic stretch. That means when you bounce for stretching, that is not a good idea. Another thing that's a big thing right now is your steps, your Fitbit steps or your watch steps and all of that. You know, I got in my 10,000 steps today and so therefore I'm good. Well, that's just movement. That's called non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is burning of calories in everything else that we do other than exercise. But just simply getting in your 10,000 steps a day it means that you moved more, that you weren't sedentary, and that's always a good thing. But it doesn't mean that those steps were intense enough to consider it exercise. You're probably not, you know, goose-stepping it your whole day long. And I hear oftentimes, too, oh, I'm really busy at work. I walk all the time at work. I mean, you walk for maybe a minute or less, and it's probably not at 70% of your maximum capacity for aerobic exercise. And so that's non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and that's not considered cardio. It's considered good movement, and we should keep moving. We don't want to sit set, um, stationary or sedentary, but that is not your cardio for the day. You still need to get it in. Plus, your body adapts to whatever you're doing every day. Even me. I'm a fitness professional, and I still have to get in my cardio. Even if I teach a cycle class, even if I teach any other cardio classes, I still need to get in my cardio because I'm not pushing myself as hard as I could be if I'm just teaching a class. All right? So everybody, get your cardio in. Be well.